Now let's head to Dallas where earlier today Mavericks coach Rick Carlisle addressed the Dennis Smith Jr. situation. This is the first time he's talked about it. Take a listen. Smith is not here, um, but I want to let everybody know that uh, I reached out to him and his agent last night. Uh, let them know that when he's feeling better, um, he's welcome to rejoin the team at any time. Uh, we would love to have him back. Uh, in his year and a half here, he has started every game that he has been available to play. Uh, and during that period of time, he has experienced significant growth on both sides of the ball. And I'm very proud of the progress that he's made. Um, and so, um, you know, that's where we are. Uh, I don't expect him to be on this trip. Um, but again, uh, you know, I just think that he's a part of this team. We'd love to have him back. All right, can you do a, a Carlisle to English translation yeah, there, Brian, is, and just well, summarize, summarize for people who haven't followed along. What's this? This is really bad. So they said he was out for, uh, with a back injury for three games. He was around the team at that time. It then came out that he was on the trade block, which frankly, he's been on the trade block for quite some time, weeks if not months. And uh, once that report came out, he started calling in sick. Now, I am not in his apartment or house right now. For all I know, he is sick, but the implication is, is that he's basically saying, I'm not gonna be around this team. Uh, the Mavericks want to solve this. They want to mend fences because quite frankly, when you have an asset that's distressed like this, you have a hard time trading him. So they don't have a trade that they can make for him now. They'd like him to come back and keep playing. But what we have here is an exile situation, a self-imposed exile situation. And um, I, this is, this is some major breakdown here, somewhere along the line. I don't exactly know who to point the finger at, but this is not a good situation for an organization. Well, I know, I know exactly who to point the finger at. And this is where it all goes back to being loyal to your organization and the loyalty has to work both ways. Now here are a situation you have a player who's out with a back injury and now you start to shop him. Uh, you expect that player to come back to play? <laughs> so, or now is that player is thinking, oh, maybe I should heal completely because they don't really want me here and this is my opportunity to get some rest. Because as a player, you're thinking, I want to come back, I want to do what I got to do for my team. But if the organization is showing that they don't want you, I'm not going to come back unless I'm 110%. And I can't come back at 85 for you anymore because you don't really want me. And, and Scotty, it's not just that they were shopping him. Some of the reporting that came out around that time was yeah. not very complimentary things about his attitude or that, that Rick exactly. Carlisle had was frustrated with him. And that's, if it's a player, you're hearing that stuff exactly. also. And, and that's where all the loyalty kind of breaks down at. It's like, you're not going to be loyal to me, then I'm not going to be loyal to you. Yeah, and the thing about it is this is a, a second-year player who is a lottery pick who has a lot of promise. When you see a team want to trade a guy like that, there's something else going but on. But I, I will say this to that young man. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a lot to be said if someone is trying to trade you. You do have some value in this game. There's 29 other teams out there that you can play for. So don't sell yourself short by cutting yourself away from something that you have so much love and passion I mean, for. That's, that's a good point. Right. What's and happened by the way, here? he's under contract, so yes, his, a couple he, can't, more years. he can't stay away forever. Well, there's a right. whole bunch of guys under contract that are staying away from their teams right now. I'll just point that out. <laughs> I mean, we got a whole list, but here's what I'm going to say. The Mavericks' life, you know, whole organization changed when they got Luka Doncic, mm -hmm. and it changed the way that what Dennis Smith <laughs> Jr.'s future was going to be in this league, and that more than anything is probably why they're looking to move on from him. But the way they have handled this has not been ideal. It, it hasn't worked one way to say or the, the least. Other. I mean, some of those guys you talk about who are in exile, like J.R. Smith, came to an agreement with the Cavs. This is not well. I guess Chandler an Parsons came to an agreement too, but it's certainly not a good. <laughs> I mean, you know, yeah. Carmelo's out there. Is there's a, there's a whole exile team that you could put together a pretty good. Ooh, we should talk about group. whether that's yeah. a lottery team. Should we start um, a team? <laughs> we could start a team. <laughs> well, Scotty, if you're playing, I'm gonna. I want that team.